Now I'm going to show you a slightly more advanced um, colour replacement technique and we're only going to work on the hair in this photograph to change its colour. Now for this we're going to need to select that hair um, and keep that sort of distinct from the rest of the image when we make our adjustments. Now the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the whole layer just in case I make my, some mistakes and I want to go back to the beginning again. So I'm just going to right click on background and I'm going to duplicate and that's fine, background copy, um, we can call it something else later perhaps but now I've got two copies of my image just in case I mess things up. So the first thing I want to do is select just this hair. Now in Photo Plus there's a number of selection tools, I can select rectangular spaces and shapes, I could do circles and different um, built-in quick selection shapes but none of those are suitable for this hair so I'm going to use some different tools. I'm in fact, the one I'm going to use is the Smart Selection Brush and this allows me to draw um, over the area that I want selecting. So I'm going to select that and notice I've got quite a small brush uh, but I'm going to zoom in just by scrolling with my scroll wheel. I'm going to zoom in on my image and as I start drawing around the outside of the hair, it starts expanding the selection to sort of cover areas of the hair. Now this is quite a fiddly job and you want to take your time on it. If um, yours is selecting too much or too little of the hair, you can adjust the grow tolerance. So the higher the tolerance, the more um, the more similar pixels are going to be selected. So if it's too high, you'll end up selecting sort of the skin color when you're trying to select the hair. Um, if you take it too low, then it's, it's going to only pick up very, very similar colors. So 50 is not a bad value, but you might want to adjust it a little bit on yours. So take some time and keep drawing through and get the main um, bulk of the hair. And once you're nearly done, if there are any bits you want to actually remove, you can change the selection mode to subtract from selection and then you can just draw in any bits that you've accidentally included. So once you've got most of the hair selected, um, we can just refine that selection just to make it a bit less jaggedy. So if we go to the select menu, we're going to do two things. Under modify, the first thing we're going to do is feather. And this just gives you a bit of a, a slightly fuzzy edge to your uh, selection so that our adjustments aren't quite so harsh. So we're going to click on that and we only want to feather by a few pixels. You'll see as you do it that your expansion kind of grows. So let's try maybe just three pixels. Press OK. And we also want to smooth it out. So let's go select smooth. So that's select, modify and smooth and again maybe just maybe two pixels of smoothing this time. Okay so we're now ready to apply our adjustments to this. So if you don't see it already go to adjustments over here and we're going to go to colorize so click on that and you'll see that we get an adjustment layer created and immediately we've got some changes to the color of the hair here. Um, so this adjustment layer has been created, I can click it on and off to get a sort of before and after effect and I'm going to just use the hue control again just to try and find a slightly different colour. So you could um, do all sorts of experimenting with this, you could saturate it right down and make it sort of quite grey hair, you could really pump the saturation up and have a very bright coloured hair, you could go all the way to sort of green or, or blue or pink hair if you wanted something totally different. Uh, but obviously the more extreme, uh, the less subtle the effect, the more obvious it's going to be. But try and get a, a, a sort of base colour you like, have a little experimenting. I'm going to go for sort of a, a sort of auburny, reddy kind of colour. Now let's look at how we can just do a little bit more refinement. Um, if I zoom in on my image, I'll see that there are some bits where maybe I've uh, not quite applied the effect that I want to. So to adjust that I can actually click on the bl little black box, now this is called a mask for the colorized um, layer. Now this tells um, Photo Plus where I want this effect to apply 
And if I use a brush, I can actually paint on this mask. Now if I go to color here, you should have white and black as your two main colors because this is a black and white layer. Now if you paint with a white brush, it applies your effect and if you paint with a black brush, it gets rid of it. So if I just make my brush a bit smaller, it's a quick tip for you, the um, square bracket close and open buttons on the keyboard um, are your brush increase and decrease in size, so it's quite useful to have those. So I can now brush on um, a little bit more of that effect if I want to, of my color effect, and kind of draw it on. And if I think that I've gone a bit too far, I can just take it off again by clicking here to change. So I've got black in the foreground and I can just draw back over and it just gets rid of the effect. Now I've got a few ways of making things a bit less extreme. One of them is I can adjust the opacity, which is sort of the transparency of this layer so that if we reduce that, you'll actually see some of the original hair color come through from underneath, and that helps it sort of blend a bit better. So let me zoom out. And let's see that effect. So with my colorized layer selected, if I change the opacity, you'll see that the effect that I've applied now is much more subtle. Okay, but that helps it sort of blend in with the original hair color. And if you're going for more of an extreme color change, changing the opacity might just help it sort of blend in a bit more. But another thing you can do is you can actually change the blending mode. Now, there are lots of different blend modes and um, it's sometimes quite difficult to understand exactly what effect they're going to have. So one of the best methods is just to play with them. Uh, but if you went, for example, a burn effect, then what's going to happen is it's going to apply your changes or your adjustments from one layer to the other based on sort of the differences in the colors in the two layers. So again, this can be quite good for applying uh, your color changes in a way that don't affect the rest of the image so much. But you could look at different effects like a dodge or a darken just to see what kind of impact those different uh, blend modes have on your color changes. And the rest really just comes down to experimenting with different hues, saturation, lightness and a few different blend modes. I'd recommend trying multiply and burn um, as good starting points for some good effects. And don't forget to just affect that opacity so that you can just make your, your impact a little bit more subtle um, or stronger, depending on what you're going for. And when you want to check your effect, you can just show or hide your colorized layer uh, to see a sort of before and after. And once you finish, you can export your image as your final piece of work.